Welcome, adventurers, to a world of wonder and whimsy, of fantasy and the fantastic of Dungeons and Dragons. Please clap. Where to even begin recapping last oh, session? Yeah. <laughs> As your party discovered an encampment of goblins launching themselves at the sun every morning, <sighs> you further learned that this was no misunderstanding. You see, a wizard named Roscoe had a vendetta, as well as some good-intentioned population control, which you thwarted with the power of safe sex. The next morning, a parade of <laughs> prophylactic-wielding goblins made their way to Wetzel's Pestle, right as you all skedaddled out of there with your reward. Uh, I don't think you all bought any of the potions that were there, and the healing potions. You bought the, the tentacle face. Yes. I bought the yeah. tentacle potions. face, yeah. But I yep. don't think we bought any healing potions. We only have time for the important stuff. <laughs> as you, you drove away, you left up some posters of the alleged pretzel for prophylactic program, and you sped ahead into the great and winding Yakan forest in search of the lost tomb of the Necro Wraith Scepter and the treasures that lie within. As you all ride in the van and think back over the last few weeks, you realize it's been a long time since you've had the comforts of a city, and your diet has mostly consisted of onions and potentially that sack of goblin meat. And berries. <laughs> and berries. You do have an unlimited <laughs> supply of berries. <laughs> As you travel along through the forest, you know, you see the beauties of the woods, the little deer walking through, the, the trees, the beautiful flowers. You see ahead that your path is blocked by a giant fallen tree. What would you like to do? Does anyone have a, uh... ew, 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 ew. you know, a what's saw? what's the word that I'm looking for? Yes, a saw. <laughs> uh, no. No. I mean, I could, I could Eldritch Blast it. Well, I was gonna say, how strong are the kind of stinky horses? I mean, they're dead. It depends <laughs> on how you define strength. If they're, if strength is resistance to dying, they're exceptionally strong. I meant more like, like, can they like attach them to a tree and they like pull a tree? Oh, I would seriously doubt oh. it. I don't think they have the physical integrity for that. Never mind. Go ahead and whoever would like to investigate the horses, make either an investigation or an animal handling check. <laughs> <laughs> They're not really animals anymore. That was but... my question. I'll take a look. Uh, yeah. We'll go with animal handling. That is a 15. A lot of their bones are starting to poke through. Uh, the flesh has kind of fallen off. They're looking more and more like just sort of like skeletons. It's been weeks of decomposing, and it seems as though it's been accelerated by the fact that they're like moving around <laughs> out in the elements. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like they're in pain because you know they're undead, but they're they're you know they're horses. Is there anything that I can do to uh, to sort of bolster them? Like you know, I don't know, put some spackle over the cracks. <laughs> uh, maybe wipe off some of the ichor that's <laughs> sloughing off of them. Make an Arcana check. Oh, that's not great. Uh, that's a, an 11. Not especially. You know that after a certain amount of time with the spell uh, turn horses, raise horses, <laughs> raise undead horse, uh, there's only a certain amount of time they have, usually like a month or so before they start to just not become super functional for pulling large things. Right. You know, a skeleton horse can still pull a little something like like a halfling or or something like that. <laughs> but I imagine like a halfling in a tiny little chariot. Oh, God, don't give everyone ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How heavy does the tree look? Make an investigation check. OK, can I also go look inside the tree? 
Yeah, uh, make make an investigation check. Right. 17. That's a nine. Magnolia, you're looking around the tree and you see that it is a, a very large tree. Uh, you know, it's along this path and it looks like it's it's toppled over fairly recently. Uh, Whirl, you're looking around the area and you see that near where this tree has fallen over, there's some other sort of trees that are kind of bent and you see some like prints in the ground, in the mud. They look like giant talons. Ah. Or clawed feet of some kind. Guys, I think we might have a problem. Yes, I agree. These horses are not lasting as long as I wanted them to. No, they're, not that. They're beautiful. No, I, we'll, we'll be taking care of you soon. Don't worry. I, I'm actually more concerned about the big old talon footprints by the fallen tree. Ah, uh, that does seem like a problem, doesn't it? Can I put my footprints inside the talon footprints to compare? Sure. It is much larger than yours. Oh. I don't know what check it would be <laughs> to compare. A, make but... a foot check. <laughs> <laughs> Do I recognize like what kind of creature these may have come from? Make a history check. Ooh, 19. It's talon-like. So you would imagine uh, this would either be like a, like a bird type creature or some sort of large a lizard. I guess like dinosaur would be the word. I don't know. Mm. Uh-huh. Hmm. Should we be concerned? Maybe? It's probably bigger than us. Do you think it was here recently? Does it look like the tracks are recent? <laughs> They're in the mud, which means it's got to have been sometime in the last few days. Okay. I need to ask this question, just pure obligation, but is there any way we can go around? Yeah, sure. So as you're looking around the area... The trees around you are very thick. This is like sort of the only path through the Yukon forest. And it's the Yukon forest is like this vast area. And so it's very difficult. Like you could walk through it, but to get your van mm. through and your horses, this would need to be moved. And you do see off to the side, there is another small path um, that looks like uh, your van may barely uh, squeeze through. I'm feeling uneasy about this uh, this giant talon situation. So maybe we can try to mm -hmm. move this log or just like get out of here as quick as possible. I don't know. Can I can I Eldritch Blast it? You start e-blasting it. Just <laughs> yeah. one after the other going into yeah. it. And it starts, you see like, like it hits the tree. Uh, and you think in maybe like eight to 10 hours, you will be able to like carve enough blast through this to like, just like get a hole big enough for, a it's like, this is a massive fallen tree, like a redwood. Uh. Did I get a sense of how heavy the tree was when I was investigating it? Yeah, it is real heavy. You like try to push it uh, and, and you can't. It would take all of you and then maybe like a bunch more people. Uh, to like lift this out of the way. Would you say that it weighs more than 500 pounds? Uh, yes. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm not very strong. I think we gotta find another way around this thing. Yeah, or if maybe find someone bigger who can move it for us. I think we all have very strong wills. We are strong in our hearts, but not yes. strong in yeah. arms. Yeah, not... Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Well, there's 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 another <laughs> another little path over there, so maybe we can try over there, and maybe there's someone around who can, I don't know, maybe they have a big axe or something. Let's hope so. Let's try going around. Let's do it. Do you all want to bring your van with you? It's a it's a little tight tight squeeze, but you can probably get it through. I say we bring yeah, the van. I'll go I'll go around and I'll fold I'll fold in the mirrors. <laughs> 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 uh. As you're going through, who's who's like going first? I'll I'll walk first with the the horses. Like you know, I'll keep I'll I'll pet them and whisper sweet necromantic nothings into their rotting ears. <laughs> I'll keep an eye, kind of keep an eye out in the back and make sure that nothing's like no giant birds are attacking us from the sky or anything weird like that. Yoda can whirl make perception checks. Ooh, that's not great. That's an eight. Oh yeah, that's also not great. That's a seven. This log has just got some of you just very confused. <laughs> Gert, you do see uh, as you're, there's like a little sign on the ground that it looks like it's fallen over along the path. Sort of 
pick it up. Uh, it looks like it, it's sort of been like trampled recently and says something town. You're not sure exactly uh, what it says. Okay. Uh, you guys, there's a sign, but I don't, I don't really know what it's indicating to. So I'm not sure if it's very helpful. I use my eyes to read the sign. It says something and then town. Well, it says something town. Well, maybe so, maybe uh, the town is something town. Maybe, yes. Maybe. It could be anything town for all we know. Can I look at the sign and investigate? Yeah, sure. Make well, investigation passing check. the sign around. What does this mean? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a four. I'm fucking clueless. Yeah, a four. It still says just something town. It doesn't say something. It's just whatever was there has been destroyed or like uh, taken away and just town. It's like blank town. Yeah, like there was something there. It got scratched out or destroyed from like being in the mud. And it says town. You know, town is part of whatever was on the side. So to clarify, it's not something town. Like the name of the town is something. (laughs) Because I feel like this is some weird Connor thing. Okay, you're right to feel that way, but no, it's just whatever. All you know is that this sign, there was some, there was some text, and then there was some other text. The other text says town. Whatever came before it, you don't know. Well, the good news is we're near a town. Well, maybe we should go see if they're all dead. Maybe you can bring them back to life, Yodik. Yes, that would be wonderful. Uh, that would please me so much. Should we take the sign with us? I think we should leave it here. Okay. So that, you know, future travelers will know there's a town. Something town. Also, hopefully it's a town <laughs> full of living people who have giant axes who can, you know, smash a tree for us. Good point. I was yes. so lost in the sign that I forgot what we were doing. Okay, well, it sounds like we're going into a nice little village. So should we keep going? Yes, I can't sure. wait. Whether they're all alive or all dead, I can't wait to meet them. To clarify, you would know it's not a village. It's, it's a, a town. town. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as, you, as you go forward, I had you see uh, several houses arranged like a little cul-de-sac. There's like three on each side, but it's quiet. And you immediately notice that all the houses have their windows boarded up except for a single building at the end, which has the door wide open and smoke sort of comes from the chimney. Hmm, how perplexing. Well, we know there's at least one person alive here. Mm -hmm. Or they died recently and the fire's still burning. Or it's the thing that, you know, dropped on the tree. No matter what, this house might contain an ax. This is true. true. Could also contain valuables. I mean, if they're dead, then, like, finders keepers. Like, if they're alive, we should probably let them keep their stuff. Mm, All right. But what if it's useful to us? Well, then we bargain. Yes. Bargain. Gert, you hear, you hear, like, a little, like, wink from Neil in your pocket. (laughs) You're a wink? (laughs) Does he say wink? He says wink. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to steal from people or or kill them and take their goods? We're not going to kill anyone. We're either going to bargain or take the things that they left behind. But that's not stealing. Oh. Okay. It's not stealing, Neil. Yotik has his little dagger out and is like practicing stabbing with it. (gasps) 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 In his tiny (gasps) little moth claw. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yotik? Yes? Be a good influence for the children. (laughs) Neil like points. What? Children? Where? The the, the children. The... Neil. Oh, yes. Just like, bring it down, bring down the dagger. Just like, you know. Oh. Let's just, oh. you know, he's, he's just a baby. Oh, right. Yeah, I, yes. How foolish of me. He can't wield a dagger. He'll feel terribly jealous of me. I'm so sorry. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Gert, you look down at the little screen of the Tamagotchi and you see, like, two more pixels in Neil's hand. <laughs> just 
Oh no. Kind of stabbing forward. <laughs> this is fun. Like leaning oh, over your no. shoulder. Oh, look, he's so cute. Yeah, oh, he's just. I pull out my dagger again and start stabbing there with it. Yes. Oh, start dear. stabbing it. I'm failing as a mother. I think you're doing a great job. Yeah, you're doing fine. I mean, I was raised by fairies, so honestly, this is probably more normal for him. Thanks, guys. I needed that. I love you, Mom. Oh. <laughs> start weeping. <laughs> <laughs> so you start stabbing in the air. I'm stabbing the air what? in time with him. <laughs> Neil, if this is what makes you happy, then you can you can stab your little dagger. Yay! <laughs> he just keeps doing it. And you see uh, happiness and then plus one uh, just sort of like pops oh, up on the screen. <laughs> Can I go to one of the boarded up houses and just like knock on the door? You walk up to it. You go to knock on it and uh, sort of like your hand kind of squishes against the wood. Like it's sort of old or moldy. Are you staying near it? Uh, I mean, once... I mean, yeah, I guess I'll, like, once I walk up and, like, my hand squishes it, I'll just, like, keep doing it because it's weird. Yeah, splat. Splat. It just sort of, like, starts to, like, push in more. Uh, like, it's, like, very old and and moldy. I think this... I don't think anyone lives here anymore. Or at least if they do, they're not living very happily. It's kind of mushy. Mushy. What do you mean mushy? Like, I'll just like poke a finger into it. <laughs> yeah, it goes in really easily. Oh, I'm an expert in things that are rotty and mushy. Let me take a look. I'm going to go over and investigate the door. Do I get advantage because I'm an expert in things that are rotting? Uh, go ahead and make a standard investigation <laughs> check on this one. <laughs> nice uh, try. 13. And touch it. It's a lot squishier than like wood. It's a lot squishier than wood. I know what wood is like, and this isn't how wood is. Is this flesh? Ooh, can I Doesn't make a flesh check? <laughs> we'll say with the same 13. Doesn't appear to be flesh. Or were you familiar with like the mimic you touched earlier? Right. You oh. know, like that was like sort of flesh in a different form. Doesn't doesn't appear to be wood, it doesn't appear to be flesh. It's just occurred to me that if this were a mimic, this would be a very bad thing to be doing. This whole house could be a mimic and we would have walked nearly straight into its mouth. And I'm backing up. <laughs> oh, I'm going to keep squishing the door. I don't like this. I'm going to go check another one of the houses and see if it's also squishy. Also squishy. Does it look like it's rained here? Uh, yeah, uh, looking, uh, make a nature check, actually. Okay. That's a nine. The ground isn't particularly damp right now, but uh, you know, in the last probably few days, it's rained. You know, like there's like some like uh, standing mud, and uh, it's a it's a damp climate. Does it look like this place has been like abandoned for a while? Like, can we find like rotted food? Like, maybe there no one has just been able to like take care of it. So you haven't gone in any of the houses yet. Uh, there is the house that's open at the end, but go ahead and give me a perception check if you're like looking for things. Yeah, I'm gonna be looking for things. It's an 11. The houses look like they're sort of clean, at least like from the outside, you know, it looks like they're like newly painted, newly put together. The boards that are on them seem uh, well put together. Are there, are there any uh, like upper story windows that aren't boarded or anything? They're all single story uh. houses. I see. Are the do doors are also boarded up or just the windows? Uh, doors are also boarded up. Oh. I think we should go into the house yeah. that's open. At least see if anyone's there. Maybe they can tell us why all these houses are so squishy. It's really concerning. Like, I'm not mad about it, but it's just, it's weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's very strange. It's off-putting. Houses is. squishy? No. You think it's like damp inside? Oh, it's probably extremely damp. Ugh. Like very, very humid. Mm. It is a damp climate. It has been established. That's <laughs> that's that's part of the lore now. <laughs> Who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. Uh, Yoda, give me a perception check. Oh yeah, I'm great at those. Man, I'm not rolling really well today. Uh, that is going to be a twelve. As you're all sort of walking toward this building on the end, the seventh 
house, you see it's a little larger than the others. And you look up and you see that there's a sign kind of hanging above it, like you would see on an inn, uh, but it's blank. There's nothing on it. Uh, and you just you smell this very sweet, inviting aroma from the inside as uh, as you approach. The doors open. Uh, it seems like you can easily walk in, and you do see a figure, uh, sort of like around the corner. So it's like not you don't have direct view of them from the outside. Now, be cautious, everyone. The sweet, inviting aroma could be the smell of cooking flesh. But it smells good. Yes, precisely. It's, does it smell like dessert like? Uh yeah, it does smell it smells sweet. Like uh like candy or uh like like you're baking something uh in the oven. Don't be fooled. That... Don't be fooled. Have you ever been to a cremation? No. Well, no. let me tell you, they smell wonderful. Do they smell like dessert? Yes. Dessert to you or dessert to us? <laughs> I'm not sure why that would be different. <laughs> I, I have I have a weird feeling about this. I also have a weird feeling about this. Mommy, can we get some dessert flesh? Oh my god. Um <laughs> I can feed you, you know, your Tamagotchi food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flesh, flesh. Uh, no flesh, Neil. There are some things I can be okay with. The dagger I can be okay with. The flesh eating thing, I don't know if I can accept that. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. <laughs> 18. 18? Uh, Neil's like, okay, that makes sense. I guess there are boundaries and other things I should learn about. <laughs> step, step, step. Good job, Neil. I, I give Neil a little pet on the head. He very excitedly uh, eats some digital food as you all... Uh, <laughs> Or once again, faced with this sweet aroma and this figure around the corner. All right. I'm going to approach the door and give a little knock and say hello. Does anyone have any objections? Do we want to engage? Or should we just go in guns blazing, as they say? I don't know what guns are, but I know what blazing is. I mean, we may as well say hi and see if they want to share. Yes. Or we could do both. We could run in, say hello, and then stab. We can offer them a gift and maybe they'll give us something nice. And yeah. flesh. That's a great idea. Got goblin flesh. I have berries. Yes, we have many things, many trade goods. They should be excited to see us. My mom always said, don't show up to a party empty handed. So. Yes. Yotik, Yotik nods and pulls out his dagger. <laughs> I'm going to go to the van and I'm assuming I have like some type of gift basket that I could like decorate super quickly with like bows, like throw a couple onions in there, like wrap up some like rotting flesh and some like brightly colored paper and like stuff it in there too. Oh my God. You have paper in the van? Yeah. I have like construction paper to draw on. Oh man. Like half your construction paper has been eaten. Oh no. <laughs> Most of it is gone. And then I'm just going to hand it to Whirl and be like, you want to add some berries? I'll add a special a special berry to it, and I'll uh, I'll summon a chaos berry and put a chaos berry on top Hell of it. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we'll hold the d twenty until we until sure. something happens there. Sure. Uh, Magnolia, go ahead and make a performance check. Oh, this better be such a great fucking basket. <laughs> it's a sixteen. You are able to like gather some like vines and just like very quickly, it takes you like five minutes to put together this basket of just like weaving it together. You have the paper, you cut it up and crimple it and like make this little nest. You put onions, like the nice ones are like, like two of the like sprouted ones that have like the little flowers on top. You kind of weave those Cute. in. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you put the flesh in there or not, <laughs> berries and... <laughs> I'm going to, like, take a nice-looking piece of flesh, like, try and wrap it like it came from a butcher or something, and, like, stuff it in there, you know? Yeah. It, a nice little piece of, like, green goblin flesh. You, you like, uh, you uh, schlick the, the like, green ooze off, so it's just, mm -hmm. like, a slab. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, a week-old piece of goblin meat, but yeah. it's it looks beautiful. Thank you. Okay, we're ready, guys. <laughs> we're great. We're great guests. Yeah, this will go great. Let's knock on the door. Wait, so are we do are we distracting with the 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 basket and then we do the stab? Uh, I what I forgot what the plan was. I say hold on stab. No. Yeah, All let's right. let's start with like words. Yes. 
Yeah, but if they're like a really big <laughs> asshole, then we stab. Yes. Do we want a code word for when we begin the stabbing? Do you want to like stroke the side of your nose and make eye contact with each other? And then we know it's time to stab. Sure. Sure. All right. That sounds like a good idea. When you do this to each other, that means we're going to start stabbing. Awesome. <laughs> Not going into the back to do cocaine. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, wa- I walk up to the, the open door and I reach a, a, a claw knuckle inside and tap on the door. H- he- hello? Squish, squish. Uh, it doesn't make a sound. It just sort of squishes on the inside. Oh, it's mushy. You see that uh, inside the inn, there's like a little uh like front desk you see like there's a little bell on it you look around and you see it looks largely deserted you can't get like a full look in like the back like kitchen area there's like some desks and uh tables and a bar and you see that behind the front desk there's a young woman uh with blonde hair uh and she's smiling and she's looking ahead does she respond when i say hello uh, she doesn't. She's unblinking, and she's just sort of wearing, like, an apron and sort of looking ahead. I, I look back at the rest of the group with a kind of horrified look. What is this? I don't like it. I'm going to, like, peer around Yotik's wing. Hello? Your words echo far, but nothing happens. I'm going to peer underneath Yotik's wing. I will also peer underneath Yotik's wing. <laughs> or is he just Scooby-Doing around his wings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you will look in and you see this figure looks like a, a young blonde woman looking ahead. Uh, she's she's not blinking. She's just sort of staring ahead. Lower half of her body is sort of uh, hidden from uh, behind the desk. I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out like a like a pinky bone, like a little fragment of bone and like throw it at her like gently, you know, just toss it. Yeah. It like lands like on her shoulder and kind of like just kind of stays there. Oh, I don't like this at all. I think we need to get out of here. Maybe she's like, Yonik, is she dead? That's a great question. I'm going, I'm going to attempt to ascertain the nature of her mortality. I widen my eyes if that's a thing that a a moth could do. (laughs) And I observe her and I attempt to ascertain whether she is uh, living or undead. Uh, Make a perception check. Oh, that's finally good. 19. Looking at her, she doesn't appear to be moving currently. Uh, And her eyes have been open for the last minute or so. Usually when I see a humanoid who does not move and whose eyes stay open for multiple minutes means that they are deceased. So I'm going to declaratively say she is dead. But she's like standing up. I'm going to go inside and like go up to the counter okay walk up to the counter is the floor like also squishy it's a little squishy but not like as squishy as the it's like you know like there's like a little tiny give to it okay and like wave a hand in front of her face i think i blinked during that (laughs) (laughs) just kind of just kind of reach forward and just like give her a little shove to see if she topples over. Sp- Your hand goes into her. Oh, not again. <laughs> no. And you've sort of pushed it a little farther than you pushed anything else. It's sort of like a few inches in. As you pull it out, you realize there's something very off about this. Oh, you think? <laughs> this <laughs> material. You kind of squish it in your hands. It's it's familiar. You hold it to your mouth. You kind of smell it. Taste it. What? This is cake. Oh, God damn it. No. It's <laughs> all cake. <laughs> oh, no. Whirl, what do you do? <laughs> kind of take another lick of it off of my hand. Well... The good news is she's not dead. The bad news is I think she's cake. Oh, I'm gonna just like, what weapons do I have? Oh God, I don't know what fucking weapons do you have? (laughs) (laughs) 
I just want to eat cake. And <laughs> the world's literally just at this point, just like kind of eating it off of his hand. <laughs> no, don't eat the cake. No. I but rush into tastes... the room and slap the cake out of your hand. But it tastes so good. And that my was hand's a covered woman. in it. That's a woman. You're eating woman cake. But my hand's covered in cake. How else am I supposed to get it off? You uh, you go like this. It was a but woman. You don't, don't it's... eat women. It's uh, all... Unless they say it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but it, it's so sticky and my hands are covered in icing. I'm just going to go back to licking my hands. <laughs> I'm going to ritual cast detect magic. Everyone hold tight for a quick 10 minutes. Don't eat any fucking cake. <laughs> <laughs> As you uh, start casting detect magic, you all sort of look around behind you and you see that the doors are open and you see figures coming out. They sort of are moving very stiff and robotically toward you all very slowly. Oh, this is this is extremely unpleasant. I think we should probably leave. How bad can cake hurt us? It's just cake. I don't want to find should out. Should we just grab should we just grab the receptionist cake and run? She was put there to be enjoyed if she's cake. I like poked a hole in her shoulder by accident. Mm-hmm. She, so she's already ruined anyway. They're going to have to redo her anyway. Wow. True. So let's just take her and run. Hold there. A figure jumps out. A sort of younger female fire ganasi with short, fiery hair that looks a little like frosted tips. Uh, and she <laughs> has this giant candy cane uh, pointed in your direction. She wears this long tunic with flames printed at the bottom. What brings you? To New Flavor Town. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Connor. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Is this oh. Guy Fieri as an NPC? <laughs> My name's Galleria, but people just call me Gal. Gal Fiery. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. I can't. This wasn't where I expected to end up today, but here I am. <laughs> we're, we're merely. Travelers, uh, just passing through. No funny business here. Yeah, and we were kind of just looking. There's like a tree in the road. We just were hoping someone in this town would have an axe to like get rid of it. Here, have a have a gift basket. <laughs> sort of. It is such a nice gift basket that she lowers the candy cane. Yeah. Huh. I thought you were here to destroy my cakes. Of course could see you have done some work on it. That was an accident. I thought she was a person. I was just trying to like, you know, push her over and my hand kind of just, you know. You have to forgive him. He's only a child. He doesn't know not to just punch holes in women. <laughs> He's just out of control. Just gonna lick some more icing <laughs> off my finger. <laughs> Come on in, you know. It's all right, it's all right. Uh, you see, uh, she calls out to the, the group of uh, what you assume is cake people, the dozens of them, sort of like some of them have like raised hands slowly to their face and like open their mouths, like <laughs> like very like basic Kevin McAllister shocked. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, it's not the beast. Everyone go back inside your homes. Oh, the beast. The is beast. there a beast? Yes, come inside in, in case there's issues. Sort of leads you to the back room. Uh, where you see there's this vast kitchen, uh, just full of different sorts of implements. You see, I I suffer from a terrible curse. She sort of looks down dramatically. I come from a long line of food mancers, but this curse upon me, it's, I can make the most delicious dishes of all kinds, but they're always cakes, always cakes. So I had to run, run away from my home in Flavor Town, found this place. Oh, so there's an old Flavor Town too. Uh, make a history check. Oh shit, that is going to be a fifteen. Yeah, you're familiar with uh, the great city of Ontario, uh, where there uh, is a section called Flavor Town. Ah, yes. Uh, More of a district. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Flavor district. <laughs> <laughs> a town. There's a sign. Uh, <laughs> you see, everything was going great here until the beast started attacking. Well, let's get to the beast in a minute. 
you okay you're cursed all you can make is cake where did all of these cake people come from that is the great power of cake mancy it's a powerful big deal it's it's a real big deal <laughs> i'm gonna learn how to do that also it's really good cake for what it's worth yeah would it would it trouble you to have a, a slice of your cake sure <sighs> Capital T tasty. You see her frosted tips flare up and uh, points the candy cane at the table and this like a beautiful like chocolate cake with like uh, like little like it looks like uh, roasted pears sort of like Ooh. caramelized along the outside kind of uh, she goes like like just does some like karate moves in the air and it suddenly is sliced perfectly. There you go. Oh my God. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wow. I reluctantly take take a piece of cake and hold it close to my face and like inspect it closely and smell it. I don't I don't know if I've ever eaten cake before. It's really good. You should really try it. I reach my little mandible things out and <laughs> eat some of it. It is one of the most delicious things you've ever had. It almost tastes better than flesh. Wow. <laughs> I hate to say this, but this might be my favorite. <laughs> Told you. It's much better than paper or or the drippings from the... Never mind. <laughs> well, I see you've all met Angel. Uh, she's my second in command. Uh, and you see that the one at the front with the, the hole sticking out of her, she doesn't seem too phased by it. Kind of like slowly rotates and like raises a hand. It, like very like kind of creepy, uh, but smiling the whole time. I guess that makes it creepier, but... <laughs> Hi, sorry about your body. It tasted good. She can't speak, but uh, it points the candy cane, and over the next course of like a minute or so, the the shoulder starts to like regrow, and it, it seems back to normal. So you said there's a, a beast? Is that why all the other houses are boarded up? Something terrible has been attacking in the night, taking my citizens. I, uh, I've been trying to bake an army, um... <laughs> I tried to bake weapons, but she takes out a dagger and throws it against the wall, and it just kind of, uh, it's cake. Uh, it just kind of explodes. Uh, doesn't really work. What kind of beast is it? I haven't gotten a good look at it. All I know is it's large and uh, only comes when it's hungry. I've been out scouting supplies when it's attacked. Meow. You look on the other side of the room, uh, you see in a in a, a sunbeam, uh, there's what appears to be a loaf of bread. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna approach the loaf of bread and I I kneel down to look at it. Meow. Oh he hello? Hello there. I reach out a claw and stroke the loaf of bread. It it starts to vibrate a little. Um Oh, that's that's just my, my cat loaf. Uh he's pure bread. <laughs> This is fucking Christ, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> this is now my favorite episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach, reach out all four claws and try and gently pick up loaf. Easy enough. It is just a loaf of pure bread. <laughs> it's a little heavier and denser. I, I hold loaf close to my body and stroke it. Oh, it's Meow. wonderful. Is it warm? It's so warm. Can I pet it? Yes, pet it. <laughs> Don't take it from me. You can't take it from me. I'm gonna come pet the loaf of bread. Meow. <laughs> How much money would you like for this loaf? No deal, traveler. I start stroking the side of my nose aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have any cocaine. Oh, that's that's all right. So you've never gotten a look at this beast though, right? You don't know if it flies or if it walks or does it have big talons? Uh, yeah, it has big talons. I've, I can, I've heard it sort of escaping through the woods, knocking over trees and that sort of thing. Oh, that would explain the knocked over tree in the mm -hmm. road. Well, if you all have a knocked over tree in the road, I'm sure my citizens uh, would be willing to help lift it out of the way for you. Oh, that's nice. Oh, are they capable of such a task? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them. The cake people are, sorry, are, the cake born are kind of. <laughs> cake born? <laughs> we don't want to hurt your cakes. They're weak, but they, uh, with a bunch of them, they can, they can accomplish a lot. They're just very slow. Oh. 
Well, we can give them a ride in our van. Yeah, we could pile a bunch of them into the van and help them get over there. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they're uh, not usually leaving the houses unless there's intruders or something like that. Mm. Uh, they've been trying, to, I've been telling them to stay inside so they don't get attacked, but uh, curiosity gets the best of the cake born. Curiosity seems like a strange attribute for people made of cake to have. Do they have free will? Yes. <laughs> she squints. <laughs> Fascinating. So are the houses, the houses are also made of cake then. Everything here is made of cake. Oh, are the houses alive? Are the people alive? This is a uh, ethical question I haven't really uh, asked myself before. Hmm. How long have you been doing this that you haven't asked yourself those questions? Uh, a couple weeks. It's power of cake, Mancy. <laughs> Capital T, tasty. <laughs> so this creature keeps coming and like eating the cake citizens, right? Yeah. Well, I know it's it's big enough. It destroyed the Bunt family house in Marble Manor. Is it also eating the houses? It started eating the houses, but it mostly goes for the citizens. And it, it mostly comes at night, uh, but it's, it's started coming more and more frequently. Okay. I just want to put this out there. Maybe he's nice and maybe... He thinks that you're just leaving him treats, which is why he keeps returning, because he's like, oh, a bunt cake house. I'm large. It just looks like a bunt cake. It must be for me. Someone finally cares about me. And then he's like, cake, mine, my size. Woo! Eats it. What if you just baked him a cake? Maybe he'd be happy. Maybe this is the start of a beautiful friendship. You could bake him a beautiful cake that is just slammed full of poison. We have the onions. I don't think onions are poisonous. <laughs> I know, but they smell. Maybe he's allergic. I don't know what I'm saying. I have, I have a lot of thoughts. But Magnolia has a good point. What if it is just like, oh, look, free food and doesn't realize that the food it's eating is like sentient food? What is that noise? Over in the corner, there's like a bucket of what looks like buttercream frosting. There's a ripple in it. Uh oh. The ripples are starting oh, I... to get larger. That might be a bad sign. Uh, you see Gal around inside. Cakeborn citizens, get inside! Get inside! Uh, you all start to hear something large coming through the trees. I'm gonna like find a window to like peek out of. Yeah. Yes, yeah, same. Same. I'm going to continue holding loaf, though. <laughs> I, I hold loaf close. I'm going to hide behind the receptionist, Angel. Okay. Angel actually uh, ran outside uh, following oh, Gal shoot. and started uh, going toward um, uh, one of the houses to get inside it. Okay. I'll hide behind the desk. Is there any indication of like a like a, a bassement or a, a garage or uh, some kind of secure structure we could go inside of? Uh. I, I understood some of those words. Uh, this, well, the in your end seems pretty sturdy. It seems as sturdy as any of the other houses that are made of cake. But there's there's not like a trap door that goes to a basement? Making an investigation check. Oh, no. I can't find the bassement because that's only a seven. Yeah, you do not find the omelet du fromage uh, in there anywhere. <laughs> as you're all sort of hunkering down, uh, looking out, you see the trees start to part. Something large is moving through. You hear these mighty footfalls get closer and closer, and then it peeks out through the tree line, and you hear a giant chicken bursts through the tree line. I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, God. <laughs> Giant chicken admittedly wasn't on the list of things I thought this might be. <laughs> yeah, same. 20, not natural. 13. Nine. Six. It runs out, this giant like chicken, like white feathers, just looking like a giant chicken that was sort of just blown up to be as large as one of these houses. It's like 10 uh, to 12 feet tall. It's got big fluffy uh, belly, uh, runs towards and starts pecking at a house. Uh, and sees Angel uh, headed towards it and uh, goes to bite. 
yeah, that'll hit. Mostly because, you know, she's made of cake. Uh, <laughs> grabs her in the mouth and starts to, like, pick her up and uh, turn around and run towards the, the tree line. Uh, but you got around before that happens. So, Magnolia, you're up. It's a fucking chicken. <laughs> That's not an action. I'm just, I'm saying that out loud. <laughs> um, fuck. Okay. Um, I'm going to try something a little weird. I don't even think it's going to work. I'm going to cast, pre- I can't, I'm so bad at saying this word. Prestidigitation. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you said it. Hey. Yeah, nailed it. Really? A plus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I just have such a hard time saying that word. And I'm just going to like, because I feel like chickens are very like easily stimulated, right? Potentially. I feel like that's a common assumption. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna like press to digitate like a bunch of like twink. Can I like a bunch of twinkly lights around him? <laughs> yeah. Of just like little chicken friends or just like little like chicken chicken. What do chickens like? I don't know. I don't know what do chickens like. Uh, well, let me look okay. The room. First question: Is he trying to cross the road, and is this town in the way? Oh god, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> you do not see a road currently in town that he appears to be crossing. Are there any eggs possibly nearby? Is she using the eggs to make her cake? <gasps> oh my god! Is there things god. we haven't uncovered yet? Holy shit! If you would like to make a perception check to see if you see any eggs or something like that, you are welcome to. I'm going to do that instead of fairy lights. Okay. Make a perception check. It's 12. You know this. this is a, a, a female chicken. It could be a mom. The chicken has picked up Angel and is starting to run away with her. With, not, oh, mm-hmm. with Angel instead of eating her. Gert, you are up. Okay. I don't want to have to resort to violence, but I might have to. Um, maybe I'll take my crossbow and try to hit the chicken okay. with an arrow. Tight. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. Nine. Arrow goes uh, right into the the woods. I think Gert's quite scared of this chicken. It is large and terrifying, which brings <laughs> us to, speaking of large and terrifying, Yodik. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a, an okay characterization. He's not that large. Beautiful and terrifying. It's mostly fluff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Yotik is just going to look look out the window at the chicken as it runs away and pet loaf and just, hmm, oh, I see. Oh, he's, he's taken that uh, cake woman. Hmm. That's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> That'll bring us to Whirl. Does this look like it's a beast? I mean, it looks like a giant chicken. Looks like a giant chicken. <laughs> I'm sure. Let's try this. I'm going to cast Speak with Animals on myself. Okay. And then Yay. I'm going to uh, just run outside and just yell up at this chicken. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Stop for a second. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, the rest of you. I don't know if this is how the spell works. Uh, I think it, it's just that it can understand you, but I think for flavor, it's just uh, yelling. <laughs> sure. <laughs> World just starts squawking like a chicken as far as the rest of you can tell. Dude, fucking druids, man. Well, that's a nine. Does that mean you can understand it as well? You gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration. So yeah, I can also understand it. Well, gotta go. Gotta feed the kids. You're, you're feeding. You're feeding your kids. Yep. <laughs> Starts. Uh, <laughs> continues to move. Oh, it's got like a little leg. Oh. It's... With a nine, it is not persuaded to stay. Yeah. Uh, I'll. I guess I'll, I'll just kind of like use the whatever movement I have to continue chasing after it, and I'll just shout back at everyone else. It's feeding its babies. You see, Gal is running forward with the candy cane and like points it at the ground in front of the chicken, and it sort of turns to like a, a pudding cake batter and the chicken steps in it, but is not uh, encumbered and is able to dodge out of the way of the attack. Uh, and uh, you see that there's like this just sort of like little fountain of, of buttercream uh, that, uh, but the chicken keeps moving. Uh, Gal yells, Angel, Angel, please, no. And it sort of falls to her knees. The chicken is pretty fast. Um, uh, top of the round, Magnolia. 
I'm gonna cast command on it. <gasps> okay. Um, uh, what are you commanding it to do? I'm gonna, I speak one word to command a creature I see within range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. I'm gonna command it to stop. Uh, what's the thing it has to make? Uh, nope, it doesn't matter. I assume it's above a seven, which is what Yeah, it, it was got. a 13. <laughs> It stops. Oh, I got it to stop, guys. I got it to stop. Uh, awesome. That'll bring us to Gert. Can I cast Minor Illusion to make it look like another bigger cake is nearby for it to take with it? Hell yeah. Go ahead and make a deception check. Uh, that's a natural one. <laughs> Amazing. So how do you want to critically fail and make this the least appetizing uh, cake you've ever seen? Um, it's just like really like bubbly and melting and moldy and green. And it's like just kind of like implodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the uh, vinegar baking soda volcanoes yeah. like three days later after you're like, well, I'll clean that up later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my, oh God. my gosh, I'm failing. <laughs> oh, amazing. You see the uh, world just listening. Well, that doesn't look good. I uh, just sort of like it's halted currently, but continuing to move. That'll bring us to Yodic. <laughs> I'm going to vocalize to the rest of the group. Uh, are we... Are we trying to kill this bird? I don't think so. I think we're just trying to get it to stop killing Angel. All right. Uh, how far away is it now? Uh, from you in the building, it's probably about 120-ish feet. Mm. Yes, I'm going to cast Chill Touch uh, and chillingly touch the chicken. I'm going reach, reach out a claw, channeling necromantic energy around the claw, and a little like... Ah! Spooky energy line goes toward the chicken. It definitely misses with an eight. You reach out, but you see Loaf, like right as you're about to do it, it kind of just like flips over and it like oh! sort of wiggles into like a sunbeam. <laughs> so cute. Oh, I missed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. That'll bring us to Whirl. I'm going to continue, uh, basically use my movement and action to kind of just like get, continue getting closer to the chicken. Um, just kind of okay. like have my hands up so that I'm not looking threatening. I appreciate that you're just trying to feed your babies, but you're feeding them people and you're kind of killing people and that's kind of not nice. And we could probably find you a better food source if you'll let us, you know, help you. Make a persuasion check at disadvantage sure. because it already failed sure. before. Uh, nope, that's six. <laughs> nope. I'm gonna keep doing this. Well, that's <laughs> not very nice at all. Fuck off! Yeah, the rest of you just hear Whirl making like offended squawking noises at, in the direction of this giant chicken. At top of the round, um, it is going to just dash into the woods. It's it's halted, so it didn't get to take its its uh, movement last term. Magnolia, you're up. It's starting to. It's basically this is the last round before it disappears. I'm gonna just Eldritch Blast it. I'm just gonna aim for the leg. Okay, cool. I'm trying to break its leg. Perfect. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Oh, uh, ew, that was a nat one. Oh, no. Nat one? Uh, yeah. You, like, pfft, go to e-blast it, and it, like, you like, feel like your hand kind of fizzling, and you look at it, kind of pfft, uh, poofs into your face, and kind of, like, wily e. Coyote, uh, just, like, uh, like the, your hair's blown back and covered in soot. Uh, it's force damage, but it's a pfft. Okay, never mind. Uh, unfortunately, it does not hit, and the chicken's... Starts to run off. All right, Gert. I'm just gonna do a little Hail Mary and like pull out my dulcimer and try to play a little tune to like entice it to stay. Okay. Uh, make a per uh, Go ahead and make a performance check okay. at disadvantage because it's hostile to you. Okay. Uh, that's a 10. You start to play and you're doing an okay job of it. It's not a bad song, uh, but the chicken, it's its out of there. It's its beyond music at this point. Okay. All right, Very Yotic. sad. Yotik is uh, so distracted from the chicken by the cat uh, being cute in the sunbeam that he's forgotten entirely about the chicken and is just following the cat <laughs> around trying to pick it up. 
<laughs> that's a mood. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's my life. Whirl. Uh, last last thing before this uh, chicken goes away. Does the chicken looks like it weighs more than five hundred pounds? Yes. Damn it, it looks. It looks <laughs> like. <laughs> um. At this point, how fast does it look like the chicken is moving? It looks like it's moving pretty fast. Like it's dashing and like it's holding someone, but it doesn't seem to be like it's any weight. And it's doing like, if a chicken could do a Naruto run <laughs> and just like wings behind it, just like it's getting out of there mm-hmm. as fast as it can. I feel like that's I feel like that's just naturally how chickens run anyway. They like stick their head out and they've got their wings, <laughs> got back. Their wings back. Yeah, It's really <laughs> chicken um, running that Naruto is doing. <laughs> I'm just going to shout back to the rest of the party. I'm just going to go after it. And I'm going to use my action to wild shape into a riding horse. My God. And okay. which gives me 60 feet of movement. So I'm just going to start <laughs> bolting after it as a horse. Just like drop to all fours mid run and just kind of like shift shape as I'm going. Animorphs. <laughs> uh, hell fucking yeah. <laughs> Are the rest of you joining? The rest of you trying to run along? I'll try to run along. I don't know if I can keep up with a horse, but <laughs> I, I'll give it a good shot. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, sort of reluctantly run behind. Uh, did I did I get the cat last round? Did I pick it up successfully? Yeah, uh, it's it is literally a loaf. Okay, it cool. Can't really <laughs> resist. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run after horse whirl with the loaf. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna follow, but I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna lightly jog. <laughs> As some of you head off with urgency, while the others kind of lightly jog. <laughs> After this, you see Gal sort of fall to her knees. Angel, Angel, please, we have to get her back. And that is where we'll pick up next time. Oh. <laughs> Thank God. Poor Angel. Interesting. Interesting. Did you name her Angel because Angel Food Cake? <gasps> 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 <laughs> <laughs>